Welcome to the second devlog of Untitled Gravity Game, and I know what you're thinking. How, how did you make nav mesh generation 10,000 times faster? Well, it was a bit of work, but I've been exploring a new method over the past three weeks that isn't just faster, it's also structured nicer than the output of the spider navigation plugin that was discussed in the previous devlog. Which before the weekly breakdown and the very basic explanation as to how the new method works, it might be nice to see why I'm not using Recast, the industry standard for nav mesh generation that comes prepackaged with Unreal Engine, as I only mentioned it by name in the first devlog and never explained why not. But put simply, this is what Recast looks like on the first map. It doesn't cover the entire map. Which you might be thinking, why does it need to cover the entire map? Just rotate the map under the player like a space game and call it a day. Sadly, it isn't that simple. Uh, and this mainly stems from the player being on the inside of the map. So we can't get away with the typical AI trick used in space games where the nav mesh only needs to cover the subsection of the planet where the player's line of sight isn't obstructed by the planet itself. Meaning as soon as the enemy comes within line of sight, it can start moving. This is of course an oversimplification as the nav mesh doesn't always span the entire distance of the player's sight, uh, but I digress. So if we used it here, being the player's line of sight isn't obstructed most of the time, they would notice where the nav mesh doesn't cover the level as the enemies wouldn't be moving. And because such, I don't think it's too far-fetched to assume that this would result in a poor gameplay experience as the constant threat of being caught is only present a fraction of the time. But now that you have the context behind the motivation to recreate nav mesh, let me share my three week journey with you. For the first week I started by reading and displaying the mesh data using the draw debug mesh function as the basis for the new method is mesh operations and the debug draw is so I could visually tell if I messed up somewhere. Next I worked on cleaning the mesh data as it seems a side effect of importing meshes into Unreal is duplicate vertices. But I'm going to assume there's a very reasonable explanation like it's an intended feature of something like auto collision generation. Because surely I won't continue to find problems with the Unreal Engine codebase, right? Right? However, back to the first week's work, I tried to make a generalized function for vertex reduction and manipulation that works for both quads and triangles. However, the code started becoming more and more unreadable as each polygon type had specialized code. So I decided to split the code up into different functions, one for triangles and one for quads. That way the specialized code for each polygon type was in its own respective function, with the extra benefit of better readability. Then made a function called nav mesh narrowing to act as an encompassing function to the previous mentioned, and based on the selected polygon type it would call the corresponding one. The reason for that function name is along with removing the duplicate vertices, the subfunctions also encode the agent radius by pulling the edge vertices inward in an attempt to keep the AI from clipping through the walls while pathfinding. Encoding the agent radius was a bit tricky for the quads, as both polygon types used their centers to pull the vertices towards. So I needed to find the two triangles that made up each quad, as they were no longer guaranteed to be next to each other in memory after the removal of duplicate vertices. But I'm going to leave this part of the algorithm out, because, you know, can't give away everything for free. And I have bills, so hire me. But after that I finished the week with code rewrites for both readability and the removal of unused code. For the second week I worked on an edge case for the quad narrowing code where if two holes in the mesh shared a vertex diagonally, then the updated vertex from the agent radius encoding would be the same as the original, because the encodings would pull in opposite directions, thus cancelling each other out. So for the encoding to work properly, the vertex would need to be split into two vertices, where each vertex takes a different encoding. And to have it split correctly, I needed a way to group the triangles that were connected to the vertex, as the already grouped quads weren't guaranteed to have both its triangles share the vertex being split. Then need to assign one group a new vertex and translate both vertices in the previously calculated directions. To achieve the grouping, I simply checked which quad center the triangle was closer to. And being it worked, I gave it the uninspired name, the split algorithm. Then finished the week again with code rewrites for readability and fixed the bug I introduced in the Ninja character plugin that went unnoticed for months. For the third and final week, I worked on the split algorithm for the triangle case, 
It was a bit more difficult, especially since I couldn't make the same assumption I did with the quads, where I assumed the max number of quads connected at one vertex would be four, so to encounter the edge case it could only ever happen with two missing quads. However, with triangles, it could be any number which means I couldn't use the centers of each triangle to determine which group they belong to, but again, I'm going to let you figure that one out. I will say, though, I started with the problem of solving for two holes before moving on to three or more, then ended the week working on code readability, cutting out unused code, and reducing the memory footprint. I will say the output for the triangle section isn't exactly what I wanted, but it's a result of the method used, much like how recast returns edges that don't completely match obstacles. Basically what I'm getting at is there's no perfect method, but for my use case, this is what I needed. So if you're still listening at this point, you might have picked up that not once did I say that the process mesh has been passed to Detour, the pathfinding section of NAF mesh. So while the NAF mesh generation analytics show an average speed up of 12,000 times, and the most favorable case showing an 80,000 times speed up, it isn't usable until either I connect it to Detour or rewrite Pathfinding and connect it that way. But here's the breakdown of each mesh's run, where the first two are the test meshes for the split algorithm, the next two are the final map iterations, and the last two are the concept maps that still need work. Now I will note that I recorded only one run of each mesh, so there's no data to average against, meaning the actual times for each mesh could be lower or higher than the recorded values. And I know what you're thinking, just go back and re-record the runs. Well, uh, let's say hypothetically, there's been other work done to the narrowing function since, and it may or may not be faster with per se work. Work that might be alluded to at the end of this video, and may or may not have been done over a series of git commits, where the person making those commits may not remember the exact commit it was, quite possibly due to a lack of sleep. But remember, this is all hypothetical, of course. Oh, did I mention this all runs on one thread? I mean, back to the topic about adding pathfinding. Whatever the outcome may be, I hope to have it finished in a month, assuming I don't get super busy organizing Moon Jam, the Twitch streamer Moon Moon's Game Jam, or run into any bugs or obscure edge cases like the normal vectors of the nav mesh being thrown away because the world gravity is hard coded to be in the downward direction. Seems oddly specific, doesn't it? However, I will say the nav mesh generation turned out well, it's formatted nicely, and though the vertex count is dependent on the mesh it derives from, it's still less than the amount spawned by the spider navigation plugin, at least in my use cases. And last, look forward to the addition of pathfinding in the fourth devlog, as next devlog I want to share some of the things I learned while reducing draw calls for the pickup item system.